Welcome, everyone. I will officially get started uh, to kick things off. My name is Dan Schneiderman. I'm the Eclipse Partnership Coordinator here at the RMSC and one of the co-chairs behind the task force. And I'm Deb Ross. I'm chair of the Rochester Task Force, co-chair of National Task Force. Excited that we are at how many days, Dan Schneiderman? Oh, give me two seconds. 116. 116 days, people. It's really Those exciting. Counting. And you can always tell how many days if you go to rochestereclipse2024.org, which I probably do like three or four times a day at this point, um, just to partly to check how, how many days is it again. Um, Dan is more nervous than I am about this. He's He breaks out into- I have to get through a handful of things. Uh, speaking of other countdowns, so you can check the website. We have our countdown clocks uh, here at the museum and as we travel, Museum and Planetarium. <coughs> Excuse me. But I have heard word that there's going to be a new countdown clock in Rochester. You have. Oh. I see. Have, have I not told you about this? He has not told me about this. Uh, I've, nice I've heard word that there should be one coming very soon to the Greater Rochester Airport. Fantastic. Ooh. That's exciting. Uh, and I think it might even be installed before the holiday rush. So perfect that timing. Perfect for all the kids coming home. For Christmas and things like that. And the family is all, all that good stuff. Um, as we launch into this, I want to get out ahead of this and say that at the end of this meeting, we'll have a big sharing session. Um, and I want you guys to be thinking of a couple of things. First of all, announcing what it is you're going to be doing, um, especially if you haven't already announced it. Uh, the other thing is, what are your needs? What are your actual needs these days? So your needs could be for food trucks or funding or porta potties or people who um, to interpret uh, your event. They could be for um, uh, any kind of assistance. Josephine, our amazing volunteer, is in charge of all this. No, I'm just kidding. Josephine is typically a volunteer of everything. But this is going to be um, a real, the next couple of months are crucial for connection. So talking about what it is you need, making that visible to everybody uh, is really important. If it's funding, talk about funding. Don't go on and on and on, right? But but that the end of the, this time will be for sharing. So we'll ask you at that time to raise your hands, think about what you want to say. Okay. So jumping back in, you know, as we're talking about the holiday season, I uh, want to wish everyone who celebrates, of course, a, a happy Hanukkah. Uh, we decided to have a little bit fun with the eclipse. And along with the holiday season, well, even Santa knows eclipse safety. And I have to say, eclipse glasses make great stocking stuffers. So uh, here at the RMSC, oh, one, one. Uh, here at the RMSC, uh, we've had Santa actually give away eclipse glasses uh, at our Santa themed events, and I have uh, we have to say huge thank you to everyone. We've been given one of the greatest gifts, which has been oh how everyone has been busy and been announcing things and. All of these news articles are from the past week and a half. And that's that doesn't even start to scratch the surface. Dan just sort of chose one for each of the major things that have been announced. And there's there's some that were announced today that we haven't even had a chance to, to talk about yet. But um, yeah, so thank you so much to everybody, not just for doing the things that you're going to do, but for announcing them and getting out ahead of it early. It both informs the public about what's gonna happen and inspires everybody else to get their ducks in a row. So thank you all of you. And thank you to those of you in the press who have been reporting on it so delightfully. I have to say that I think we're gonna have uh, two weeks in a row with like three, four big news, uh, Eclipse news announcements made is pretty insane. I don't know of too many other places that are doing it this often. Beat that, Texas. <laughs> Uh, and we actually wanted to share one of the things. Actually, I am going to double check that I shared correctly. Oh, nope, not, it's not Spotify. Sorry about that. Have they been seeing your Spotify list this whole time? No. Oh, okay. No, it would be the Eclipse one. Okay. Of course it would. So we wanted to share this sizzle from the RPO announcement. A cosmic crescendo, an astral odyssey, a voyage that goes where no orchestra has gone before. The Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra and music director Andreas Delfs welcome you to the Blue Cross Arena for the RPO Eclipse Spectacular.
a symphonic celebration featuring your favorite space jams, including music of the planets, as well as movie music masterpieces from Star Wars, Alien, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Plus, an original Starry Suite by RPO Principal Pops conductor, Jeff Tyzik, created especially for this event. Brace yourself for astonishing aerial acrobatics and an immersive laser light show with a high-tech video wall that brings the cosmos to life. Connect to the heavens with a message from NASA astronauts celebrating the total solar eclipse and thrill to the majestic movements of the Rochester City Ballet as it shares the stage with your RPO. Secure your seats now to experience this extraordinary event. The Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra's Eclipse Spectacular, a symphonic celebration. It's going to be out of this world. There we go. To say that I'm excited about this is to understate it by a large factor. Um, you know, this gets us out ahead of everybody else, seriously. and sort of expresses the pride that Rochester has in this whole thing. So it's it's just wonderful. We wanna, we're gonna be featuring and highlighting some of these things over the next several meetings to inspire you guys and also give you bragging rights. So go ahead and brag. Uh, and I have to say at the uh, their press announcement, it was really fantastic. They really leaned into tapping into the arts, tapping into the science. They went with as many space themed puns, which I always, I always, always encourage. And a lot of my coworkers sometimes hate. Uh, I may have ended a meeting earlier today with a bad one, but uh, yeah, just lean into it and have fun. Uh, to you know, kind of reintroduce everyone as part of this core group. Uh, of course, you see Deb yeah. and myself. Yeah. Uh, we also have to give a massive shout out to our friends at Visit Rochester, Diana and Diana and Rachel, and of course our friends at the Genesee Transportation Council, Jim and Lori. And it was the fact of the RMSC Hi, in Rochester and the Genesee Transportation Council getting on board with this so, so fast back right after the 2017 eclipse that this has let us be, you know, really help our region shine and just be so prepared. So thank you. You're, you're going to hear from both of those guys, um, both those organizations a little later with their report. So as a reminder for every time, and I'm actually going to stop sharing for a quick second because I do ask this every time, how many people is this their first time? At this meeting. At this meeting. We do have some new hands. Yes, we do. Love that every yeah. time. Welcome. So one thing we do really quickly at all of these meetings, and I will even do this up to the last meeting, is share the very, very basics of uh, the Eclipse Science. So to kind of start us off, uh, April 8th, 20, Monday, April 8th, 2024, at 2.07, the moon will start to pass in front of the sun at 3.20 p.m., give or take a couple of seconds, depending on where you are, the greater Rochester region will enter totality when the moon completely obscures the sun's disk. And it's going to be quite the sight to see. Totality will last anywhere between 39, and 39 seconds and over three and a half seconds, depending on where you are, your location. Three and a half minutes, sorry. Three and a half minutes. How long did I say? You said three and a half seconds. Seconds. Uh, it all blends together. Yeah. Over three and a half minutes, uh, depending on your location. And then the whole thing ends at 4.33 p.m. That 3.38 is uh, based on right here at the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Uh, this is as much as I'll really go into the science. Moon in front of sun, cast giant shadow. We are in that shadow. It's really cool. Anywhere in between these two blue lines that go across New York State get to experience the eclipse. It kind of, it encapsulates Cleveland, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and the Adirondacks. The closer you are to this red center line, which Buffalo and Rochester are fairly close to, the longer totality will be. Those of our, uh, those who are at SUNY Brockport will get the longest time in our region as they are directly on the center line. So, glasses update. Everyone's been clamoring, been waiting. 
and waiting and waiting. And the good news is the first large batch arrived yesterday. We received 101,000 pairs of Eclipse glasses. The whole thing weighed about a hundred, uh, weighed about a thousand pounds. And here's how we're going to distribute them. So because we only received 101,000 out of that larger batch, we can't cover everyone yet. I will be sending out an email tomorrow to cover the a good chunk of the people who will have pre-ordered Eclipse glasses. I will be going in order of, uh, in the order that people place those, with the exception of asking all of our Eclipse RMSE community Eclipse ambassadors if they can hold on just a little bit longer because their Eclipse glasses, uh, which have a special, have a slightly different design, come in next week. So I will be emailing all of this out tomorrow. All this information will be coming soon. I'll be emailing uh, how you can pick up your boxes. I'm gonna try and set one or two days aside so that you can actually just drive through and give your name, show me your ID, and I will give you a box. I start sorting these glasses this week. It's gonna take a while. So give me a little bit and then all this will be there. Uh, I will update everyone with the when the next big batch comes in as well. Uh, and if you are counting, this is 36 boxes. So more details coming soon. Uh, if you are looking for glasses at the moment, especially with stocking stuffers, uh, you know, of course, we have them here at the museum. You can just check out your local libraries. There's the Memorial Art Gallery and a whole bunch of others. If you are still looking to do a custom design, put your order in ASAP. Uh, Before we, Christmas, honestly. Yeah, we've been talking to the manufacturers and you really need to get everything in. And if you are looking to buy them in bulk uh, and aren't going with the RMSC, I know we are fairly full on how many bulk orders we can handle. Uh, I recommend going through the AAS Eclipse safety page where all of the vetted manufacturers and resellers can be found. Yep, eclipse.aas.org and you'll find them quite quickly. We will always point you to that. Uh, we have some misconceptions as we've been hearing uh, different comments throughout the community. Here's my chat. Uh, so our misconception are, well, we're covering two today. One is the sun is scary. So I have been asked, is there anything different about the sun during a total solar eclipse? And the answer is no, it's just that it's blocked. There is no different rays created from it. There's nothing more dangerous than any other day. If you were to go outside today, uh, wear an eclipse glasses and look at the sun and look at the sun with eclipse glasses, uh, during the eclipse, except during totality, when you can remove them, there's nothing different. They're the exact same sun. It's all good. People are worried a bit about the liability of their events. It's one of the things that we, a barrier that we see in between people and planning events, even within their own communities. People are worried about a kind of liability that they would expect. Like, what if the people there look at the sun without glasses? They're not going to. They don't look at the sun in general. Your kids aren't going to be, no, there will be, you know, that you don't have to worry about people just randomly looking at the sun at this time during partial eclipse any more than you would during no eclipse at all. Okay, more, one other misconception, I think. Yeah. Uh, the other misconception is the difference between 99.9% .9 coverage of the sun and totality. Here is one quick image of what 99.39% of the sun being covered looks like. It doesn't get dark outside, right? It is just, it is it, light outside. It, 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 it does get a bit dark, but not as dark as totality. Right. It is not It is not the spectacular totality. Um, We have, yes. Yeah, so uh, for what you also don't see Bailey's beads, you don't see the diamond ring, which is that glow up surrounding the moon, uh, which is really the sun's outer atmosphere. The temperature will still drop quite a bit, but it still won't be the same. And to give you an idea, so this is tot what totality will look like here in Rochester. So that image is from Dan McGlawn, who runs Eclipse2024.org. And he has created these animated GIF files of all the different cities in the country and what they look like for this eclipse. 
And you can see I put the Rochester, like the little arrow there is like, that's where that will look like that. Okay, let's look at the next slide. So 99%, like you have in Watkins Glen, is not totality. 99% is a deep partial eclipse, but you don't get that spectacular totality experience. So if you're in places that are just outside the path, you will regret it forever if you don't get yourself into the path because you won't see the spectacular event. Just to just need to illustrate that a lot because that that misconception has been floating around there. It looks pretty cool when you're looking at it with glasses, but nothing like totality. Um, a little update from the AAAS's Eclipse Task Force. Um, so a number of you, 10 from the Rochester area, applied for the Jay Pasikoff mini grants, uh, outreaching to underserved communities. There were 152 proposals received, 10 again from Rochester. The notification date for this is December 22nd. Um, I'm on that committee. I recused myself from all of the Rochester evaluations and that is sort of in deep contemplation right now, uh, all the calculations from all the reviewers. That'll be coming in over the course of this weekend with that notification date by December 22nd, just for y'all who are waiting. And now I'm going to stop sharing. Because Kiki, you're up. So let me give you access. And Kiki, we're going to ask you to introduce yourself too, because the um, you could do it way better than we can, even though we know and love you. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. My name is Kiki Smith, and I'm here with our Seek Toolshed coordinator, Nick Wilbur. We're with the Southeast Area Coalition, a microscopic community building nonprofit in the city. And we are super excited about the event we have coming up. Thanks so much for this opportunity. I have had crazy technical difficulties. My laptop died uh, just as the meeting was starting. So um, it's a good thing this is recorded because I can listen to it later. But um, the our total eclipse of the park um, is a really special opportunity for me. You know, the world is fascinated by this darkness. I happen to be completely blind and I find it a little fascinating that um, everyone's so excited about darkness for three and a half minutes. So I recognized pretty quickly after a very powerful experience in 2017 with that 75% occlusion that we at SEEK had a really unique opportunity to, and this is our byline, extend the occlusion, expand your universe. So uh, what we, we've got on tap, all of the basics, you know, well, I do need help, by the way, finding a food truck, um, food, music, beverages, astronomers, interstellar cameras. But um, what we're offering the people who choose to celebrate the eclipse with us is the ability to experience another kind of darkness. So we've created the total eclipse of the park, not only for individuals who are often marginalized during such visiocentric experiences and events as a total solar, solar eclipse, um, as a place where individuals with vision loss who quite often have uh, dual you know, disabilities, hearing loss, mobility loss, memory loss, uh, the largest percentage of legally blind individuals are over the age of 65. So we'll have a really neat audio, tactile, multi-sensory experience for those individuals. But for everybody else who wants more than 3.5 minutes, they can come to Genesee Valley Field House and have opportunities to try tandem biking and audio darts and play beat baseball and learn how to be or experience what it's like to do sighted guides. Um, it's really such a, you know, a concentricity for me of these kind of Olympic symbols of my life, all these circles that usually tangentially overlap, but this is really a great, great opportunity for us to educate and build community and uh, celebrate. One of the things that, you know, as I've been sitting in on these and working as a person in the Rochester community, we've really taken a little time to think about needs. We know that we can't meet everyone's needs, but one of the things that we've realized is that 
in our RSVP Google form, which is the easiest kind of accessible form for individuals to uh, interact with for technical digital accessibility. We're asking people if they have any special accommodations. You know, do they need the service dog service area so that we're not all stepping in dog poop? Uh, or do they need sighted guides? Will they need somebody to greet them at the door? Because we will have a great deal of handicapped parking available, but that distance even may be too much for individuals who are uh, in wheelchairs. You know, are our bathrooms handicapped accessible? How much ambient noise will there be? One of the wonderful things that Dan has shared with me is the light sound interpretation box. So we'll have a device if not several that will translate the waxing and waning um, into sound for participants. But you know, competing sound can be overwhelming. And one of the cool things about occlusion from what I hear is a kind of silence. Um, all of the social media that we're trying to share, we're trying to give as much attention to accessibility as possible. It's really hard to think of everything, especially if you don't live it. But um, even I today, with all of the challenges that I've had with my technology, um, I need assistance from the sighted community. So it's a really neat way for us not to be exclusive and looking at accessibility, but inclusive. Um, I've got here, and I had wanted to screen share, so maybe Nick, the wonder worker, can share this with you. But um, You'll also be experiencing, since I'm not doing it with my laptop, you're going to be hearing the voiceover from my uh, iPhone, which everybody has. Image. You'll hear my phone read things like image. Image. Then see. Seeking the best in city living. That's alt text. So we've gone through and taken that image and labeled it so that people can hear what it's an image of. That's our logo. And you can hear total clips of the park. Anyone fascinated by or living with darkness? Wow. Historic total of Seekin Arnon Asik. When? I'm sorry if it goes too late. quickly. 1 negative 6 p.m. Where? Genesee Valley Field House Lodge. 1316. Extend the occlusion. Expand your universe. Image. 2. Extend. Total eclipse of the park. So we have. Extend the occlusion. Expand. 2. Anyone? Oops. Wow. Historic. Oh, this is when? the double sided. 1, One negative. Where? Yeah. Genesis. 1000. Image. Sorry. A man wearing a blue collar so walking across the street with an older man in a black polo next to him. They you, are near a park and playground. Image. I'll play that again for you. So you can hear that. Otherwise, image. all I hear is image. But then when you alt text. A blind man wearing a blue collar shirt walking across the street with an older man in a black polo next to him. They are near a park and playground. Image. So I get to hear what that is an image of. And it's just the little things like that, um, that we are taking a great deal of pride in being able to think about and share with our community. Um, one of the opportunities that we've had in participating in these meetings and task force is to learn about some of the cool things you all are doing. Um, and as a, we're a resource sharer and connector in the community, um, but we would love to find any of you out there who would be interested in going in on purchasing materials for Eclipse viewing tents. I've been working with Anita. Um, we think we have a design. It's fairly pricey material and uh, funding is, and sponsors are some of the things that we are looking for, but minimally we'd love to connect with anybody out there who uh, would be interested in purchasing those materials for us, or with us, rather. Uh, one of our community partners will be holding a workshop, a building workshop, so that we can create those tents to share with the community on the day. It's a little environmental friendly, and we happen to be a tool shed, but um, it really takes a village. and. I know that I had a document to go over with notes that is on my dead laptop at the moment, but I think that's, you know, really the bottom line for what I was hoping to share today is just to try as we, you know, consider this perspective of the universe to consider the 
multiple needs of people coming to our event so that they can make it as feel as enjoyable as possible um, and have the best experience possible. It's kind of hard to think of everything, but I'd be happy to talk with anybody who's interested in either um, those Eclipse tents. Do you have any food truck um, resources for me? Or fell up through. Um, and if you'd just like to chat about ideas, we'd be really, really happy to do that. Oh, wait, I didn't tell you my, maybe. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with the new Netflix series or even more hopefully with the novel by Anthony Doerr, All the Light We Cannot See. Um, one of the things that if you're all, if, you, if you're at all believers, um, feel free to pray for my pitch to Aria Mia Liberti, the um, woman who plays Marie Lore in that new Netflix series. She uh, plays a character who is blind and there's all sorts of science in the novel. But the most historic thing is that she is the first blind woman to play a blind role. So I want to see if I could lure her in. Uh, so I'll, I'll take all the prayers I can get. It's a long shot. Shot in the dark, if you will. <laughs> put your name in the chat. Oh, and thank you, Nick. Put my email in the chat. Do you want to put my number in there, too? Uh, here it is. 585. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows any phone numbers. 721. Two six two four. I mean, it's just things like this that he's able to assist me. It's the little things that make everything work. So, thank you so much, Kiki, for the report. Um, everybody should uh, be please connect with Kiki for um, any kind of information like that. And we're also going to bring in Anita O'Brien, who has been working a lot with Kiki and it's sort of is our community lead on accessibility. So. Anita, I know you're out there and I'm hoping you, you'll you just share your update on some of this stuff. Yeah, um, Kiki, thanks so much for the information that you provided and the very tangible illustration of how these, as you call them, small details can make such a huge, huge difference. And so the accessibility task uh, group, the subcommittee has met a couple of times and I think dispersed to try to go start doing things. And so I just wanted to give a quick update on uh, some of the things that are happening uh, because we don't want to keep anything to ourselves. That's not what this task force was about. It was about making sure everybody has everything that they need to make this eclipse uh, the most experienced eclipse by the most number of people and variety of people uh, as possible. So there's a couple of categories. One, a, a couple of things that all of us can do. Um, we certainly want you to register your event. I suspect Dan will be talking about that at some point, but uh, there is a portal for being able to describe your event. And when you describe your event, be very become very mindful before you write that description about what you will have. And so some of the things that Kiki mentioned that they're intentionally creating or that they just happen to have great accessible parking in their parking lot, or they have an accessible restroom on site, uh, or they're gonna have mats that go out over the grassy area because it could just be muddy that day and you want everybody to enjoy uh, the traverse across your area for viewing, uh, but you're gonna wanna list all of those kinds of things. We want everyone to um, not wait until April 1st to think about people with disabilities and a variety of needs for experiencing it, but go ahead, if you haven't already, and plan your whole event through this lens of inclusion that allows you to consider uh, physical needs that a variety of people might have, sensory experience, that all of us have. We all experience life in just a few categories. One of them's physical, one of them's sensory, one of them's cognitive. Um, and begin thinking of those and making sure that you have ways for people to uh, experience it, whether it's using uh, materials that are written in a, another language besides English, uh, whether it's having that sign language interpreter and designating that maybe it's an American sign language interpreter, uh, but be very cognizant of options that are out there and then go out and seek those for your events. That's for everybody. When we think about the 350 to 500,000 people coming to our area and 26% of people in the world or in the United States have a disability, odds are we're talking about families coming in together. 
They want to participate alongside each other. So when you look at your event, you want to you want to view your plans through this idea of from parking lot to experience. And while they're there, how can the whole crew experience this alongside each other? Um, and so there's some very tangible things that go along with that. What we're seeing also is that disability organizations are really grappling with uh, the realities of the day, transportation issues, uh, limited access to transportation on a non-eclipse day will be magnified by the fact that this is a really high traffic congestion time period. So we're working with disability focused organizations to figure out where folks are and what they want to intentionally focus on um, and reinforcing access to resources into those spaces where people living with a disability may be at 320 on April 8th. Um, for organizations that don't focus specifically on disability, are you aware of the opportunities and the options for viewing and experiencing this um, event? Kiki described the viewing tents, uh, the audio light sound uh, boxes that give an auditory version. Those are just a few of the things that we can disperse across geographically. So if you want to have those at your event, please make sure you contact us so that we can figure out how to get you those resources. Um, and, and then part of this is that uh, giving out the information to the community and ensuring that all the organizations that do have touch points with people with disabilities are aware and planning and have access to resources. So alongside the media, uh, that's being generated. There are some things in the works right now that are specifically focusing on this aspect. Um, Kristen Smith, I think she is driving at the moment, but she has been working on uh, an article that will be coming out in the 585 magazine. So stay tuned for that. Uh, looking at, again, promoting and highlighting where access to um, uh, events are going to be. And if you want, I mean, I think the one of the driving focuses of this event is obviously uh, tourism and economics of getting more people to your site to spend their money uh, and recognizing that we have 300,000 people living with a disability in our greater Rochester region. And there's a $4.9 billion um, uh, expendable money uh, network within that population of people with disabilities in the U.S. And so if you're looking for a bottom line, there's one. Um, the other one is that there's a whole bunch of people that want to experience this and we have solutions and we want to drive you to the resources. There's some on our website. There's some on the uh, Rochester Eclipse website that specifically give you ideas for these kinds of uh, engagement pieces that you can incorporate. Um, and just to briefly mention, I know that PBS uh, has been putting out package of Eclipse in a Box uh, type of experiences that are both in English and in Spanish, I believe. And they're looking for partners across the community to uh, give those out to so that we can, again, reach more people, which is the, the highlight of our particular uh, subcommittee. Um, so there is a lot happening. There's a lot more conversation as people are just saying, hey, wait a minute, it's December. This is four months away. What are we going to do? Uh, but we want your answers to be grounded in accessibility and inclusion from uh, from the center line, not, not, not as an afterthought. So if we can help, um, definitely reach out to us. Um, I think that's about it for now, Deb. Thanks so much, Nita. Um, and I guess it's worth just highlighting real quick, not everybody is planning a large event. Some of you are you know, gonna be with your colleagues at your own place of business. Some of you are gonna be just with extended family, but it's worth thinking about your events and what you're providing for your employees through that same inclusion lens as well. So um, you know, helping everybody have that experience. Um, up next, I'd like to ask Katie Kovar from Webster uh, Parks and Recreation, just to share really quickly about the event that they had on December 2nd, because remember the fun is not just for this three minutes and 38 seconds. It's in all of the buildup that our community has been doing. I'm just so proud of it to help galvanize our community around the fact that this is gonna happen and have fun in the meantime. So Katie, can you just talk a little bit about this? Yes, well first hi to Kirsten. I can't call you Kiki. I will always call you Kirsten and Anita. Um, two absolute rock stars in our community. So 
anything we can do to support them. Um, if either of you guys need meeting space, and I can definitely send you some food truck recommendations. So um, I'll send that your way. But um, our event was great. So we are hosting the Eclipse Art for the month of December. And I was out of town. So we I kind of had all our ducks in a row leading up to the event. Um, but we sent out some media blasts the week coming up to the event and the day. We had all, we had 8, 10, 13 and Spectrum all come for our event, which was amazing. Um, Deb and Dan were there too. Um, Deb uh, hosted a little impromptu lecture in the hallway and had this wonderful audience of people. But we ended up getting about 75 people that came to our opening, um, which is something really different than anything we've done before. But the unique part was that we co-hosted the event with the Webster Art Club. So every year in that hallway, you can kind of see that picture where we always have Webster Art Club pieces. We asked them to supplement the art with um, things that they had created. So the group has been creating Eclipse themed art in conjunction with Tyler Norden's pieces. So they were all displayed in our hallways. Um, and I have to tell you, Deb and Dan, because they were here for the event and saw kind of the buzz around it, but our hallways have been so busy. We've had so many people come through here um, to kind of check it out. I get so many people that stop because my office is right outside of it um, and take pictures. And um, I hear the kids talking about it. Like it's just all ages. It's been really wild to kind of experience um, and really, really exciting. So if anyone, I mean, I don't know how, you know, I hate to say this, I don't know how other people's kind of launches have gone, um, but I'm very, very excited about what we've done and how this has kind of gone. So if anyone needs any suggestions, right after this, um, it goes to the Parenting Rec Center. So we're the only two rec centers to host it, which is awesome, just because, um, you know, people just kind of come through our buildings for different reasons and aren't necessarily expecting to see this. So it's just it's just fun and cool and different. So um, we're very honored that we were able to host this. Yeah, you basically had the textbook on bringing the media. So uh, <laughs> if anybody has questions about that, I am volunteering you to answer those questions. You did fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for all your support. And uh, we're thrilled. We love, we're so excited to have this. So thank you. Okay. So to jump back in, we have some Quick updates from uh, the core group of us. Uh, from where my arm is, see, uh, a lot of people probably have seen this. This past week, we just uh, officially announced the initial lineup for Rock the Eclipse, our three day festival here at the RMSC. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Phil Plate, other known as the bad astronomer. He's done work for Crash Course, he's written books, he's been on uh, a number of news, uh, the big news channels, he's written for Scientific American. Lots of fun, really funny. We have the Groovy Geologist, uh, who is a geologist and social media educator. So she talks about geology on TikTok and Instagram. She has almost half a million followers. She'll be talking about the geology of Mars. We have tons of hands-on activities. We'll be doing eclipse-themed planetarium shows, electricity theater shows. Those are our singing Tesla coils, our science on the sphere. Uh, we will be bringing back our After Dark series, uh, the Galactic Get Down, on that Saturday night. And for the first time, we will be hosting a silent disco in the planetarium, uh, which will be a ton of fun. We're going to have our friends from Astronomy on tap out here. Uh, we're keeping our ticket prices super cheap for only 20 bucks a day uh, per person or $50 for three days. Or members are free. And we have a massive free area. Uh, basically, the only paid areas are inside the Museum and Science Center and inside the planetarium. Our main stage is free. Our solar viewing is free. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have uh, some hands-on activities outside as well. Lots to come. Well, there's lots more announcements uh, for our festival. Uh, we have new merch as well. Some of you might have seen our winter hats on social media. Now is the time for winter hats, but as a lot of you have been asking, we finally have the Eclipse hoodies available online for anyone who wants to purchase them. Uh, we've heard this for a long time, and not only did we do that, we decided to go with 
sweatpants, with t-shirts, with the poster design integrated into them, tote bags. And we finally have our Eclipse glasses available online in packs of 10. Uh, that was just the best way to do it. Huge thanks and shout out to Tiny Fish Printing who have been helping us with all of this. Uh, a lot more to come. We just had a discussion today about fanny packs uh, and doing a Rochester Eclipsing fanny packs since those have been extremely popular. Let's see where that ends up. Uh, now we are going to turn it over. Is Are we turning this over to Lori or to Jim? Lori. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just realized we didn't actually talk about that ahead of time. Sure. Sure, I can. Can you pop the slide up for me? Uh, so for to, for the benefit of all the, the new people joining us and haven't heard, um, you know, we're really encouraging people to be purposeful in their transportation plans, uh, not only for your events, but um, just your every day. So, you know, trying to... Um, you know, get your appointments done ahead of time. Um, you know, we're anticipating that, um, you know, 350 to 500,000 people from all over the Eastern coast, some may be familiar with our area, many very well may not. So we've been, uh, I'm really just trying to encourage people to be be purposeful about that and and think about their their transportation, um, if especially if you're in the emergency services or um, you know hospitals and that sort of thing. If you need to be somewhere at a certain time, it's um you're going to want to um, arrive early and stay late. We we try to say that as much as we can. Uh, next slide. Um, so we've talked before that um, we're going to do a, a traffic modeling exercise um, early next month. So we're going to take the list uh, with what we have at the end of December and try to run some different scenarios for our traffic um, modeling. Uh, it's just going to be kind of helpful to share with our um, emergency responders and public safety officials uh, so, so they can kind of help plan. So we're going to be looking at um, locations. Um, Kiki will make sure we include the Genesee Valley Park if it's not already on there um, and, and everything else. So um, more about that later. And uh, next up, next slide is uh, last month we talked about uh, reaching out to the airports. Uh, so we have been teaming up with uh, Ray Detour over at the Leroy Airport as our um, aviation expert. And we're going to be hosting a, a hybrid meeting in January on the 17th in the afternoon. So um, if there are any airport owners, managers, um, operations, ground or flight um, support staff, um, just general aviation pilots. Uh, we, I know there's a lot of flying clubs. Uh, you know, get in touch with us and, and sign up for the Zoom. It'll be Zoom as well as um, it'll be hybrid, so we'll be at the museum, but but also Zoom for folks that are farther away. Uh, just to kind of talk about some of the things that are, you know, going to be appropriate for for people that are expecting extra planes that day. Um, we have about ten general aviation airports in the, the greater Rochester area. So we want to make sure that if uh, it's a nice day and um, planes are coming here, that um, we can put their best foot forward and, and forge some relationships and for the future. So I'm gonna keep it short, but uh, keep transportation in, in mind. Thank you. And then I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Visit Rochester. Besides the additional shout out uh, in the chat about the Spotify playlist that they have created. Thanks, Dan. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, happy holidays. Uh, yeah, so our big update is that we are carrying through the can the creative campaign that we've developed to promote Rochester as a destination for the eclipse, um, our Path of Totality Awesome campaign, and bringing that to life literally in the airport. Um, as Dan had noted at the top of the meeting, um, we have creative that's going up uh, this week, including a countdown clock. It'll all be past security. So um, next time you are tra uh, flying in or out of the Rochester airport, be sure to, uh, to check that out. Um, and otherwise, our updates are largely similar. Um, as all of you have started to really formulate and share your um, your events, uh, including you know the tickets going live for Genesee Country Village's Solar Spectacular, RPO's Eclipse Spectacular, Rock the Eclipse Festival, et cetera, et cetera. 
we are taking that information and um, creating uh, and we'll be working on adding all of that to our website. Um, and I will be reaching out to those of you who've got events that are especially well suited for tourists and visitors um, to try to firm up any details as you have them so we can get those added to our website. We're sharing that information with media. Um, and then our, our media campaign, our paid media campaign will be launching right after the holidays. Uh, so yeah, lots of, uh, lots of things, uh, continuing to move forward with the eclipse over here at Visit Rochester, but we are excited and we have continued to yield, um, some group tour inquiries as well. So again, we are still trying to figure out and identify who would like to welcome group tours and you can contact Diana on our team. Her information is on the screen, Diana R at visitrochester.com. And, um, I think, do we just have this one slide, Dan? Is there a second slide or is it just one? Uh, okay, and this is a carryover, I think, from last month as well, but media um, media planning is continuing. I actually just sent a couple folks an email. We've got a writer from Travel and Leisure who's working on a story about the eclipse that will run in January, So um, we, and have a couple other media leads that uh, we continue to work through as well, um, and I think that's it. But we eagerly await your events, and um, we will be probably reaching out to some folks just to encourage you to also post your events to our events calendar at visitrochester.com um but we understand folks you know sometimes can only post in so many places so we may take information from the other eclipse website eclipse Rochester eclipse 2024 to our website but um you'll hear more from us thank you thanks rachel uh to you know do this is even this doesn't uh encompass everything that is coming up there are so many talks all of you are running so many events I just did a really quick bit. Uh, the two things that I kind of want to point out on this uh, that's important to everyone is, well, number one, December 30th is the official 100 days away from the eclipse. He's not at all stressed. <laughs> I remember that, that was fun at the 200. Yeah. Let's, let's see what we do at the 100. And then I just want to mention that January 1st, that's when we can say the eclipse is this year. And I'm sure we will be having so much fun saying that at 12.01 a.m. that day. Uh, we have set the dates for the last, what is that, one, two, the last four stakeholder meetings. The in-person ones. The in-person ones leading up to the eclipse. Uh, there's a chance that we might do some pop-up virtual ones. But put all of these on your calendar. We will be sending out more information probably as we start the new year. Uh, and then save the date for April 18th as a post-eclipse event where we're going to try and tell everyone's stories, share all the highlights, share all the fun that may or may not happen. Uh, we'll all commiserate. We'll all celebrate. It's going to be a lot of fun. Celebrate. 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 There's not going to be no commiserating commiserating sorry okay uh and with that and then we'll start planning for the next eclipse yes <laughs> i i may already be starting to do the math on how many years days months all of that until the next total solar eclipse in rochester i know the day just need to start calculating everything so now we've come to this sharing section so dan's gonna leave that slide up for the, 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 wow. you don't need to leave the slide up because um, what we're looking to do is have everybody who is doing something, especially if it's new or you have a new announcement, um, if you have a need, uh, we, we want to have you sort of share. So can those who want to make sure that they put up their hands. I see Danielle jumped in front of that. Um, and uh, so just, just put up your hand, please, and we'll get to you guys um, for your announcements. And remember what you're doing, what you need, who you need to talk to, Put the word out into the universe. Okay. Fantastic. We will start with uh, Danielle. Hi, guys. Uh, Danielle Patterson. Um, I am the organizer of a music festival uh, that we're going to be doing um, for the Eclipse. Um, it's going to be taking place at Ledgedale Air Park. Um, They've got a very large amount of acres of blacktop uh, that we have the privilege of using some, um, which is super awesome, uh, especially when you don't really know what the weather's gonna be doing in April. 
you know, nice solid ground, um, super handicap accessible. Um, and then it's all the way out in Brockport. So we're going to be right there uh, in the middle. Um, we're kind of hoping that like being a little bit further away from the city and with the event going until about 6, 630, um, you know, will help eliminate some of the traffic things. Um, but we're super excited. We've got our lineup. Um, it's going to be announced in a couple of weeks. All the musicians, we are highlighting Rochester talent. Um, so we're super excited for this to be an opportunity to highlight, you know, musicians and artists that have come out of the Rochester area. Um, and along with that, um, we really also, so we have a section of the festival that we're going to be dedicating to like any like local, like artists or vendors. Um, and so we've got like a couple people so far, um, that are interested, um, but we have a lot of room. Um, and so we would really like to take advantage of that, especially with the amount of tourists that's going to be coming into the area. So as far as what we need, um, we, I have a, a link on our website for people to like send in like their information so that I can get in contact with them. Um, it's soultalitymusicfestival.com. Um, we want like anybody that has like anything fun and cool, um, like any artists from the area that like, you know, might be like nature related or like space related or eclipse related or like you know if you can like justify a one-off like we're cool with that too um but we want to use this as an opportunity to elevate the art community um surrounding the eclipse um and then we are still looking for funding these are not cheap um we're uh expecting um anywhere in the ballpark of 1800 to 2000 people um to be coming to this event um so we have sponsored packages available um those are also um, available online to like check out information. You can reach out to me for details. Um, so we need art vendors and funding. And then if anybody knows of like a really reputable security company, um, that would be really great. We have a couple of options, um, but I would really like insight from anybody that has experience working with large events, whether it's one that you've put on or you've worked with another company, just any recommendations to make sure that, you know, like we're putting our best foot forward and keeping the community safe with our event is what we're looking for. Thank you so much. Uh, feel Please put your contact information if you can so that people can reach out. Yep. And then also, Danielle, as you're getting media for this, um, make sure I know that you're on eclipseweb.org. So um, we're as we collect media, everybody should be logging in. If you you know have a link to something that's been published about you or about Rochester, um, definitely you know we're collecting it all together. So please do log in, hit the post button in media. Um, so okay, next. Oh, John. Hey, uh, first of all, thank you to Dan. He came out to Calkins Road and talked to the cast of our new musical. He talked about the uh, the magnitude of the eclipse, both historically and scientifically. It really had a profound effect on our kids to understand like how important this story is and how we're a part of this historical event. So thank you, Dan. Uh, tickets have gone on sale. Uh, they're $10 a piece, which is a fantastic deal. I will put a link in uh, the meeting chat. Um, and the way you can help us is uh, we are looking for advertisers. And I'll put a link to our advertiser form in that. Uh, you get uh, a spot in all five of our programs in February and April. And uh, we're expecting two to th 3,000 people at our shows. So thank you. Thanks, John. Okay. Um, moving to Emily from the Y. Hi, thanks, Deb. Yeah, so my name is Emily Early. I'm the director of STEM initiatives for the YMCA of Good Rochester. We are going to be hosting three separate viewing parties at three different locations. So we have our Lewis Street YMCA Neighborhood Center, which is located off Sile, right near the public market. We have our um, Camp North Point, and then we also have our Eastside Family YMCA. So they're all open to the public, but we will be having um, members get first access to registrations. Um, the registrations are free. So uh, once that time is up, then we'll open it up to the public for everybody else. So we'll be offering free yoga classes at every location, kind of like gentle, calming, relaxing yoga. Um, participants will be able to observe the sun through our, you know, I'm going to have, a, I think I'm ordering like six to eight telescopes 
with the solar viewing lens. So we're going to have that um, accessible, obviously making like pinhole projectors, clips are other activities to view the sun. We are trying to also get the 3D printers going with um, making the um, New York State and the United States pinhole projectors that were made by NASA and New York State. Oh, look at you, Dan. He's got it. That looks great. That looks awesome. Yeah, so we are going to try to do that, but we actually want our teens to de design these. So maybe we'll have the teens design these for um, as part of our STEM initiative for the events. Um, so that's one thing we're going to be doing, and those are going to be offered at the events. Um, we also are going to be launching our merch. Um, so we have a merch line that we created, and that's going to be launched early January. So people can order online, and then they get it before the event, obviously. We're also going to have merchandise at the event, too. Um, there's going to be different opportunities at the different locations. Um, obviously, our east side Y can hold a whole lot more people than our um, city location at Lewis Street. So there's going to be like food trucks, bounce house, climb, uh, rock climbing, a lot of fun opportunities for the kids. Um, we're going to have lots of tasty eclipse themed snacks and giveaways. We're going to obviously give away free glasses to everybody who attends. Um, yeah, so I guess we're going to be, our next launch is going to be our free registrations to our members and um, our merch store. That's going to happen early January, and then it's going to open to the public at the end of January. But it's going to be a good time. We're so excited about it. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, and one of the things I'm a good sort of best practice, especially in our neck of the woods, as everybody's announcing their events, if you have indoors and outdoors experiences where people can be warm, be fed, go to the bathroom um, and sort of have that and have a great experience inside as well as outside, highlighting that works. Uh, just so Can I actually talk on that for a second? Because um, two of our sites, so Lewis Street and East Side will be available indoor and outdoor. But North Point, because it is a camp style, it's going to be only outdoor. So we have been really focusing on like getting why we do a campfire or those rent those heater, um, those portable heaters or getting we have large tents. So we'll have like places for people to stay sheltered, but it's going to be outdoor for that one location. Thank you for saying that, Deb. Um, next, we'd actually like to ask Freda Schneider from the JCC to talk about what the just poetically, it's good to, for the J and the Y to be in tandem here. Thanks. Uh, you have to unmute yourself though, Freda. Hi there, everybody. Thank you so much. We are so excited at the JCC. Um, we have a little committee that's working on events for the eclipse. Um, and we're looking at um, events particularly focused on families and children. We're looking at, at indoor and outdoor events as well, and also some excitement in our theater as well. So I'm not ready to divulge our full array of plans yet, but I, I am so, so very excited. And the um, there are about 100 um, JCC employees at in this building. And I'm constantly talking to all of them about, you know, sort of everybody, all hands on deck. So we have sort of full body, everyone support in our entire building. And we have a gigantic campus with lots of acres of land. So I'm excited to do both indoor and outdoor events as well. So I promise full details to come, but I can't, I can't be more excited than I am right now, which is pretty exciting. Thanks, Freda. Um, and one of the things that actually came out in our museum subcommittee meeting was the difficulty, potential difficulty in staffing events, right? Um, and so one of the things that's happened sort of in a, in a national sense is that people have realized if you are able to give your staff's family mm -hmm. VIP access to your event, then they get to be a hero for their family and at the same time work and help make it sure. all happen so that they get enough. So everybody, everybody feels really good. So uh, everybody who's doing their planning, consider that as a means of retaining your best staff who can then, then, I mean, people remember so well where they were when this happens. Um, and if where they need to be is at work, then you want the warmest, fuzziest, feelings about uh, the workplace. Um, so you, it's just a, such an inexpensive opportunity to be a hero to your employees. So just putting that out into the universe. Uh, on those same lines, when you are figuring out your Eclipse classes, set them aside for your staff and their families ahead of time. I may or may not have a hidden stash here, hidden somewhere just for the RMSC staff. Uh, Con uh, Jesse uh, Tomlinson is next, I think. Yes. Let me put the spotlight. All right. Can you all hear me okay? 
We can narrate. All right. Can I? Okay, cool. I can share my screen. All right. Um, yeah, back in back in I think it was October, late September, I was down in San Antonio with Devin and Dan, and we we got to meet and chat about uh, some some of the stuff that we're doing at the Eclipse Company. And actually, last night we made a big update to the site, and I wanted to show you guys real quick all the all the great events that are happening right now. It's like perfect timing. Um, we made a massive update here to show as many we gathered we've been spending the last few months gathering as many events parks community sites and really cataloging it into what we're calling the eclipse directory and we have hundreds of communities hundreds of of parks and events and stuff and we're partnered with uh the planetary society and we're gonna be doing a big push we want all these people that are looking for places to go to find rochester to find your events and so um i can kind of show a little bit of what that looks like here as you go to New York, being able to see all the different communities here in New York, um, we can filter it by duration time to see like those top top communities here and see that Rochester's right there at 340, looking awesome. Here's two of the events we have. We're clearly missing out on a lot here. So if you wanna add your event, uh, you can click in through there to add. We have a form where you can bring that in. Um, some of the high level stats and all the all the awesome phenomena that you're going to be able to see if you come to, to Rochester and there's no clouds. Um, community sites, we only get out there to visit Rochester. And yeah, so that's that's kind of what we're trying to do for every community. Find find just be a huge resource for everyone who's going to be looking in North America to come see this awesome event. We also made a massive update to the map, and that's kind of what we showed in and um back in October, but this is now even more, more events in here. You can see all through the whole path of totality, all the different parks, all the different events happening. There's just, there's just so much going on. And again, we're clearly missing a lot that's happening in Rochester with only the two here, but um, we'd love to get it filled out more. And yeah, it's just uh, love feedback on it as well. We just launched this again last night. So it was really cool timing. Um, but yeah, this is this is just one part of what we're trying to do. Uh, we're also Lori's about to talk about lookup. We're trying to get involved with that and get more people just to get this. We want everyone in North America to come see this thing uh, and experience how amazing it is. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jesse. And Jesse's a great guy too. Met him in San Antonio. Um, Kathy, I just want to uh, let Kathy in uh, Casa Larga. Um, Unmute yourself, Kathy, and chat. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry I was late coming in. Um, we here at Casa Larga, our event is called a Toast to Totality while we're sipping in the shadows. Um, we have um, three distinct um, experiencing experiences. The first is the uh, red carpet, if you will. We're still trying to come up with a clever name for it over in Bella Vista. Um, it's a um, guest speaker from RIT, a young man who's a PhD student. Um, we have a lunch, um, uh, snacks, okay. open bar, um, and it's a perfect un un unobstructed view um, high up here on the hill at Casa Larga. The second uh, level, if you will, is our everyday people where you'd probably see me um, and it would be, it's the patio party experience. Um, it's on the um, south side of the building, so it does have access to, again, an un unobstructed view. Um, but it's a little bit lower key. There's um, food trucks, um, music, there's some games. Um, and for all of these folks, they have their glasses, their, their viewing glasses, and then their wine glasses included um, in a T-shirt. And then uh, one of our most favorite, the third level, if you will, down by the end of the vineyard, we have a chicken coop. And the main guy there, the main rooster, his name is Elio. And so down there, it's called Elio's Drive-In. So the cars can just pull in um, and there'll be a bar set down there and they have access to box lunches as well. It's a little bit more low key than the first two levels. Everything is handicap accessible. Uh, we do have indoor and outdoor seating. Uh, what I'm struggling with a little bit is my interactive activities because I didn't 
you've told us so many times, you know, come early, stay late. I just want to make sure that I have enough activities for the folks that are arriving, say at 11 and then leaving at seven. Um, I don't think we can have any more dancing in the dark discos in the press pad. Um, those are some scary tales outside of that press pad. So I think I got to move to something else that's going to happen in the press pad after hours. But I'm struggling with interactive activities. So that's what we're doing. We'll be talking about uh, more interactive activities uh, sometime in the next four meetings. And anybody, as Kathy, as you get your website ready for that, make sure that Dan and I are, you email that link to us and that you post it because, um, yeah, we want to shout about it. Thank you're, you. Uh, you're the first on the list, as always. Awesome. <laughs> okay, Lori Bajorek with her look up uh, at activities and events. And we, we have a, um, do you want to that would be amazing if you could show that. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I love everything you all are working on. So well, Dan pulls that up. Um, I am Lori Bajoric. I'm the president of the National Esports Association. And we are working on a national campaign called Look Up, which we've kind of mentioned in the past, but now we're actually ready to launch. And Jesse, thanks for that nice shout out because we are uh, working in collaboration with Jesse on making our Look Up um, a pledge page interactive with all the experiences that are happening. Um, so if you go to the next page, next slide, Dan. So Look Up is an educational and engaging program. Um, it has many elements, but the first one is just to take the pledge to look up. We all have been talking about how to get more people in, engaged in this, not just the people who know about it, but the other people and making sure that our youth knows about it. So our community engagement along the path, and we're using the Eclipse company along with that and experiences for businesses to engage their employees. We have a Look Up speaker series, which is going to be live on Twitch with some educators about the eclipses, but also who do you look up to and who looks up to you. We're working with Elvia Fernandez from Rockstar Academy to come up with the Look Up Anthem. Uh, that will actually go live on the 8th. Uh, we also have the interactive AI experience, which we're working with Smart School and Agatha's on this call too. So that's actually a book that is um, going to be interactive and learning about the eclipse while also the concept of looking up along with the Eclipse Experience and Minecraft game, which we have created, which has over 250 challenges with NASA curriculum in it. And we're also going to be launching those games on Roblox and Fortnite as well. Um, and it also includes our celebration on April 8th, which is going to be in, in the game as well as, a, as a live through Mexico and Canada. So if you go to our next slide, Dan. So what does it actually mean? We're asking people to take the pledge to look up. It's look up and experience the awe of the total eclipse on the April 8th. Look up from our screens and enjoy the world and the people around us. Look up and reflect on those to whom we look up to, including ourselves. And look up and be filled with the light that comes after the darkness. And look up and see that we each can make a difference to bring more light into the world. This is a moment in time that we all want to share, but it's really more than just that day. It's like, what can we do afterwards? You can go to the next slide, Dan. We're actually making this a social media campaign. So really post it on your social media. What'd you look up to? I looked up to my teacher or I looked up in Rochester, New York at the eclipse. Next page. As we mentioned, it's an interactive experience on the look up page. So it's actually lookup24.com is where you can go and take the pledge. And Jesse has been so amazing about incorporating the eclipse map what does it mean and giving some inspirational sites around it so you can actually tell us where you're going to be looking up from and i know lori and uh uh over at the gtc everybody wants to know where are you going to be where are you from and where are you going to be so we're hoping to also get some data ahead of time that we can start sharing so that we can actually help and support some of the other initiatives that are going on so i think that's really an important part of what we're doing um and that site launches january 15th next slide basically our game that we've created in Minecraft. So students can actually go in and along the way they have the story of a look up unfold and you compete each stages along the game to learn about the eclipse. And you have over 250 different gaming scenarios. So you're solving puzzles, answering questions. The whole purpose is to make it back to the earth before the eclipse.
playing the game, it's really about learning about the eclipse and meeting the students where they're at. I mean, we want people to really understand, and especially youth, to be part of this. We meet them where they're at. We teach them some education along the way, which actually goes to our next slide, Dan. So working with Smart School, we've actually made the experience of reading the book an interactive experience, and Yoko is an AI tutor. So it's really taking the way that we're actually educating our youth to another level. And she will answer questions along the way as the students are reading the book and actually learn about the eclipse and get them excited about what's coming. That's one of the things we want to make sure that this is leading up to the eclipse and making an interactive experience so you're learning along the way and actually utilizing things that are really going to be transformative in the future, specifically AI and what does it actually truly mean to do an individualized learning experience. And this one we're just kind of showing points of well, really encouraging people to look up safely. So next slide, please. So it's additional educational benefits. We're focusing on the eclipse in your community, enhancing local pride and knowledge, really encouraging about the health and safety, healthy gaming habits, um, including eclipse eye safety, and then the social and emotional learning benefits. I know some of you experienced earlier about, you know, how are we actually getting more people involved in this that actually have learning disabilities and other things that are happening? We really wanna make sure that this is an experience that everyone can enjoy. And next slide. We actually, one of our first people that are going to be in our lookup series of speakers is Dr. Mid I can never get her name right. We call her Lika. She's a senior advisor of heliophysicists and the astrophysicist for NASA. Sharing the story, I kid her that she's actually in charge of the sun and she really is a light that just lights up the room and ha sharing her story about the importance of the eclipse and what the studying means is gonna be a, a great way to launch our lookup series. And one more slide. So basically what we're asking you all to do is get ready to look up and join our pledge. If you have information, feel free to reach out to the National Esports Association and also Jesse and Agatha. This is really about incorporating a lot into the things and really helping advance the education of this and getting our youth involved in a way that's gonna be that's gonna be beyond April 8th. So thank you. Lori, I just want you to just back up for one really quick second. There are people who don't know what Minecraft is. So can you just do sort of just two seconds about that and who plays it and how it's typically played? Sure. So we're working with Minecraft education and Minecraft is basically think of Legos that's virtual. And basically youth is it's one of the most popular games in the world and you can build anything you want. So what I showed in that little video is actually what our students and our, our people have been building. So that's over a thousand hours worth of, of building the moon. So it's a, it's a, I call it like a sandbox but that's what we can use to do educational outreach and reach digitized youth where they're at, which is in playing video games. Same thing with Roblox and Fortnite. Those are three of the most popular video games that are out there. And we really, at the National Sports Association, utilize games to enhance education. I hope that explains it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. And anybody, sh anybody should feel free to reach out to Lori you know, with those kind of questions. Like, if, even if your question is, huh, explain again. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things we're working on. We're working with um, schools, after school programs, municipalities, really helping to elevate the educational level of this and making it at an accessible level. So we did a first one at School A here in Rochester, just launching the program and just seeing the students' eyes light up, not just about the eclipse that some of them already knew about, but just being able to share in the experience was a beautiful time. Great. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I just, it's a question for Lori. How can my teen access the uh, the Minecraft game? <laughs> oh, absolutely. So um, one of the things is shoot me an email. That's going to be launching again on January 15th um, and everything else. What we really want people to do is when you're taking the pledge to, we're going to have little things that will have additional information out there. But the first step is shoot us an email and we will make sure that um, we can get you the launch codes. <laughs> Hey, thank you to everybody who's been sharing. Any, um, Dan's gonna put up the slide which shows the contact information of the the folks who've been working so hard on all of this. Um, you can find us really easily, of course. Um, but any final any final comments from you? Uh, just that we hope everyone has a happy holidays and 
Uh, we'll see everyone in 2024, the year of the eclipse. Yep. What we're going to encourage for the next, the next meetings are going to be the ones that we put up for our in-person. Um, we would like everybody to start bringing their merchandise. Um, this is a community that loves to support each other. And so that, you know, there's a bunch of different, different outlets and resources for this. And we, you know, by bringing it, you'll be encouraging everybody to help spread the word and they can find out how to get their hands on the exclusive deals for those. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Let's just see if there's any other really quick, important. Uh, everybody's saying happy holidays. So um, thanks, Lori, for putting your email in there. All right. And we'll see everyone next year. Great to see you all today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.